Do the Aggies have one of the best secondaries in college football? All that and more on this episode of the Locked On Aggies podcast. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Aggies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Friday. I am your host, Joey Ikes. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. First, today, we're going to talk about the Aggies secondary. And David Cobb of CBS Sports released his secondary rankings last week. Um, and he listed the top five secondaries, in his opinion, in the country. We're going to run through the list really quick, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So the top five on his list, the first number five is Penn State. Um, second or fourth <laughs> is North Carolina State and C State. Third is Iowa. Second is Texas A&M fighting Texas Aggies. Whoop. And number one is Georgia. So there's a, a few interesting things about this list. The first interesting thing from my perspective, from my opinion, is that Alabama doesn't show up on this list. And when you think of secondaries in college football for the last decade and a half, Alabama's been on that list for everybody. Um, this year, they're not, at least not for, for Mr. Cobb, um, which is interesting. Georgia is. It's another, you know, same style of defense, coaching tree, et cetera. But for, for, for this list, at least for 2022, Alabama doesn't show up. Um, so when, when we talk about this top five, we're talking about Penn State and North Carolina State. Penn State lost Jaquan Brister to the NFL draft this past year, but they do return a couple of, uh, of cornerbacks who played really well last year, and um, and they, they've got another, uh, another safety, Jair Brown, who intercepted six passes last year. I would be willing to bet a lot of this ranking, this basis for Penn State is based on the fact that uh, Jair Brown has the opportunity to come back and have, you know, another big interception season. In addition, Joey Porter Jr. is getting, you know, some first round buzz for 2023 for the NFL draft. So uh, those two guys probably drive a lot of that conversation there. Um, in terms of North Carolina State, they bring just a ton of experience back. They have, they have four, five seniors who are, or excuse me, four seniors who are going to just be big contributors for them in the secondary in the ACC. Um, and then you get to Iowa, and Iowa's really interesting because they led the nation last year with 25 interceptions, and they bring back their best player, corner, corner Riley Moss. So he was first-team All-American, amazing corner last year, had a great season. Um, and then they also bring back Jermall Harris and, and Kayvon Merriweather. So they bring back – this group that just put together this huge interception season last year. And they added what is that school's highest rated defensive back commitment in the history of, of the 24 seven sports era of ranking recruits, Xavier Wankpa. I probably butchered his name. I'm sorry about that, Xavier. Um, the highest rated defensive back commitment they've had on top of the guys that they had coming back. So uh, I was going to have a really good secondary. And then we get to AM. and a and um, it starts with Antonio Johnson, um, who is going to be their one of their slot players for most of the year and is a just an extremely high level player. He's going to be a very, a very good defensive back to watch for the Aggies coming in 2022. That's really where it starts. Um, the, uh, the safety room, Damani Richardson, um, is a leader. He's going to be a fantastic player again this year. And then they've got a couple of, you know, former four-star, uh, four-star players, um, Jarden Gilbert, Bryce Anderson, who are former four stars, like I said, who have the opportunity to develop this year. And if they can stand in for Leon O'Neill, who is signed as an undrafted free agent 
to the uh, to the San Francisco 49ers, they really have an opportunity to have the one of the top flight, one of the best secondaries in college football. And David Cobb believes that um, put those guys with Miles Jones and, and Damani Richardson and Antonio Johnson, like we talked about, and you really have a really high level group to go with what you've got going on on the defensive line and then what you hope to have going on with the offense. We could talk about Georgia. Um, everybody knows the talent that Georgia brings through on the defensive side of the ball. Um, they only allowed, they allowed less than 191 yards per game passing last year. Uh, lost a bunch of year, a bunch of guys to the NFL, but they brought back Kyle, uh, Keely Ringo and some other guys um, along that secondary who are really going to um, who are really going to help. Um, in addition, they got a, uh, a 2020 All-American who transferred from West Virginia to uh, to Georgia, who fought off some injury last year in, in Tyke Smith. So, um, AM absolutely belongs in the conversation with these level of of programs, with these level of of secondaries in terms of what they're going to do on the defensive side of the ball. And if DJ Durkin can bring the value from a coordinator standpoint of putting them in position from a scheme standpoint to succeed, then um, this a &M defense, the wrecking crew is back and will be here for a long time. Okay. So we're going to talk about some baseball and some other things, but before we continue, I'm really excited to tell you guys about bet online. Okay. Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs, sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, the NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball, college football coming up, all that stuff. Bet Online is your continued source for all your wagering information, live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news. Betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends. And action that's bet online where the game starts. Okay, now we have some sad news. Everyone by now, uh, by Friday, is aware that the magical season that AM baseball put together this year ended on Wednesday afternoon uh, in the final four of the College World Series in Omaha. Coach Jim Slossnagel's team came up short against a rolling Oklahoma team. It was the second matchup in a row that they faced uh, Oklahoma and came up short. So they fell behind early. Um, a walk put a guy on base, followed it up with a single. Um, and then Jimmy Crooks, the, the Sooners catcher, hit a three-run home run in the bottom of the first. And frankly, the way the Oklahoma pitching staff was pitching, the game was over by that point. Um, they never looked back. AM only got six hits and struck out 13 times. And Sooner starter David Sandlin actually struck out 12 Aggies in that game. So Dylan Rock had a solo home run in the sixth um, to put to put one run on the board for AM. But that was that was all the comeback the AM the AM bats could muster um, after so many awesome comebacks and amazing, amazing um games all year and, and scrapping and fighting their way through um, through the postseason to reach this point, they ran out of fight there at the end of the year. Um, so that ends their season and, and what a season it was. And I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to talk more about that um, over the course of the next few months. But we're going to take a little bit of a look forward to 2023 um, now, as we talk about this AM baseball team, so there were four players um, who were absolute key contributors, starters, or extremely important players who were actually graduate students in 2022, which means they absolutely will not be back for 2023. Um, that Coach Schlossnagel will have to replace, and that's Dylan Rock, the starting left fielder um, and three hole hitter, <laughs> uh, Cole Kaler, uh, the starting shortstop. Troy Clanch, the starting catcher, Mr. Clutch, the 12th man, war number 12, which I think is an awesome tradition that Coach Lossnagel started this year in his first year in at AM as the manager. Um, and then Jacob Palish, the um the go-to arm out of the bullpen. Um we saw him come in multiple times this year and just absolutely slam the door shut on games and big situations. We saw him come in at a three, two count in the, in the bottom of the ninth inning with nobody out and, and get AM out of the inning without giving up any runs. 
So uh, those four guys, first of all, thank you to those guys for their contributions to what was the best season in AM baseball history. And we wish them the best as they continue on, some of them to, to professional baseball, some of them to other, other careers. Um, then we got to talk about the draft with, with baseball. The draft this year, it, it used to be held right before the College World Series, um, and now it's it's pushed back a little bit, which I think is good. Now the draft is held – this year it will be held July 17th through the 19th. Um, we'll see who winds up drafted from A&M this year. Um, who want, and then once they are drafted in the 20-round draft, who decides to actually sign and leave school early uh, because the baseball draft is different from the basketball draft and the, uh, the football draft the NFL draft in that you don't have to declare early for the draft. You're considered eligible once you reach your junior seat, once you finish your junior season, or once you turn 21 years old, you're considered eligible for the next draft. So along with the four guys above who are eligible to, to be drafted, there's a another pretty decent list of guys. Uh, Micah Dallas, the uh, transfer from Texas Tech is on that list. Uh, he was a junior this year. Austin Bose, the uh, the junior DH, played some infield this year as well. He's on that list. Brett Minnick, the junior right fielder. Uh, Jordan Thompson, the starting center fielder, um, who had a, a huge home run in the uh, the Super Regionals, I believe. Um, and then Trevor Warner, the, uh, the leadoff batter and sophomore third baseman, is actually 21. So because – I think he's actually 22, but he's over the age of 21 – so because of that, he is eligible for the draft. So that means there's seven position players, a key starting pitcher, and his best, most lockdown reliever that either certainly or will potentially be gone by the start of next year. And that's pending any transfer portal action. So there could be guys who transfer out as well. Um, so that's a lot of work for Coach to do over the course of the next year. And we have seen him... Coach Schlossnagel do some unbelievable work using the transfer portal and rec and recruiting uh, to build the team and the roster in one season. And uh, he'll have carryovers this year, which is a benefit. Uh, guys like Jack Moss, Ryan Targach, uh, Nathan Detmer, um, who will, will be back from the squad in 2022, who, who should be back for 2023, that those guys know what – Coach Schlossnagel wants and can carry over that attitude, that intensity, that preparedness, that community that this team had by the end of the season. They can carry that over and help that get started earlier in the year. Uh, in addition, they'll have uh, Kaylee Harrison back from injury, who was their starting shortstop at the start of the year, who was injured a few games in. Um, what a fantastic year 2022 was for Aggies baseball. Thanks to Coach Schlossnagel and congratulations to Coach Schlossnagel for an amazing first year. He's got a lot to build on, and we are excited to see what the next steps are for a and baseball. We're going to talk about some other stuff here in just a moment, um, talk about Max Johnson a little bit in the Manning Passing Academy. But first, I am excited to tell you about Rock Auto. So with ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for you to go to an auto parts store and for them to stock every part that you need. So save time and save money and use Rock Auto. Yep, Rock Auto is a family business. They serve do-it-yourselfers and pros for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are incredibly low, reliably low for every customer, whether it's DIY or a pro. They have everything you can need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write locked on, that's locked on, two words, in there, how did you hear about us, Box? So they know you sent. They know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about Max Johnson. Max Johnson is attending the Manning Passing Academy this week, this weekend, which kicked off on Thursday of this week. And he's the only AM quarterback there. Um, and considering there is what most would consider a, a two or three headed quarterback controversy battle scenario taking place in camp coming up here in the next couple of months, what does it mean that Max Johnson is the only AM quarterback at the Manning Passing Academy? Well, first of all, it means that 
the Manning Academy is relatively limited in size and scope for in terms of the number of passers. So they're going to take the highest profile. They're going to take the most experienced guys. That's who Max Johnson is on this A&M team right now. He does have basically two full seasons as a starter from LSU. He has name recognition from that. He also has name recognition from the fact that his dad was a starting quarterback in the NFL and, you know, played on some really great teams. So that's probably what it means more than anything. Does it mean anything for the quarterback competition for Texas A&M for the 2022 season? From my perspective, probably not um, because even if the Mannings reached out or, or the Mannings staff reached out to Jimbo Fisher and said, hey, which quarterback should come? More than likely, he's going to send Max for all those reasons that we talked about before. And more than likely, if we're being honest, and we'll talk a lot about this quarterback controversy over the next several weeks and months before the season gets started in September, or the season gets started later this summer and into the fall, Max probably has to be considered the front runner to be the starter based on that experience that we're talking about. AM has an unbelievable roster. We just finished talking about how great their defensive backs are. We've talked about the unbelievable recruiting that they've done on the defensive line. We've talked about the uh, All-American that's going to be on the offensive line this year and how he's going to anchor that unit. We've talked about the offensive playmakers. What Jimbo probably wants right now or what he's thinking right now is, hey, if I can just get good enough play from an experienced quarterback who's going to make the right decision most of the time, you know, I'm going to be okay at quarterback on offense and be able to compete at the highest level. So if the Mannings did call Jimbo, that's probably why he sent Max. Um, more than likely, I think the Mannings picked the highest profile, the biggest names from the list and Haynes King has a game and a half, a game and a couple of passes worth of experience. Um, and the game he played was Kent State. So he's not the guy. Um, and, and Connor Wigman is just, he's a true freshman. Like there's, they're not going to bring a true freshman in who's not certainly going to be the starter. So Max is the guy for something like this to attend from AM. Um, in terms of what it might mean going forward for the quarterback competition, uh, I mean, maybe. Max gleans some nuggets from this academy. He really refines something. Maybe the the Mannings are able to drive some new development into his system over the course of this couple of days that really sticks as he leads up into camp. Maybe that happens, and maybe that gives him a little bit of an advantage. But other than that, I don't think it necessarily means anything for the quarterback competition other than Max is the most experienced guy. Max was probably considered the front runner already. And now it's just a matter of he's receiving some of the um, some of the benefits and some of the extras that come with being uh, considered the front runner to be the starting quarterback. You get opportunities like this one to go be a part of something like the Manning Academy, uh, just like these high profile high school quarterbacks go take part in the opening and Elite Eleven and things like that. Um, this is sort of they get that opportunity for the college quarterbacks as well. So. That today is our show. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me. You can find me on Twitter at Joey Ikes. You can read my writing about all things Texas A&M at aggieswire.usatoday.com. You can follow the show at Locked on Aggies on Twitter. And please subscribe to the show on the podcast platform of choice, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. We're on all of them. Check out your YouTube channel at Locked on Aggies as well. Be sure to subscribe there, like, hit the notification bell, rate and review us on the podcast. All those things that the algorithms love that really help us grow the channel. We're really excited to be here with you guys. And now that we've talked about the Aggies, now that we've talked about Texas A&M and all things, and you've made Locked On Aggies your first listen, which we really appreciate, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen. Every day, host Chris Gordy and local experts of Locked On I'll pop on there every once in a while, take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. So make Locked On SEC your second listen, Locked On SEC.